Texas Rangers. Do you play in the 83 Texas Rangers? Yeah, I was with the Rangers. I came up at the end of the 78 season. Uh, they told me to pick a team that was similar to, to yours and, I guess, record that year, and I chose the Red Sox. But in 1983, I batted in all nine spots of the You did? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I didn't get to play our position, though. <laughs> I was thinking, what, Camp Harris? Harris and Tovar. Camp Tovar. Camp Camp Harris did it in 78, didn't he? Or was it a different position? He did Yeah. He was in Texas for, he was there when I got there, but I don't I think he went to the Angels from there. Yeah. They traded him to the Dodgers. During that season, he was our all-star pitcher. He was 14 and 2 at the half, wasn't it? No, but you got, you got Dave Stewart returned, but he didn't turn the corner until he went with the Oakland. Right. Dave went from Texas to Philadelphia. Oh, that, he didn't really he still had really good, tremendous stuff. Right, but he didn't have an off speed, everything was the same speed. And when they let him go to the splitter, it gave him a natural changeup where he didn't coach his Um, they coached other sports. Actually, uh, uh, I didn't start until I was 12, uh, mm -hmm. and and uh, desegregation had just come into the area of right. uh, Virginia right around the 1967-ish, 67-ish. How sick was that, huh? Well, it, it was odd because I, went, I, I grew up in Brooklyn for a couple of years. My parents moved here, and I stayed with my grandparents, and I moved up here with my parents. And I went to uh, kindergarten, well, nursery school and kindergarten up here. And it was very diverse. You had whites, blacks, Puerto Ricans all together. Mm -hmm. And then going down to Virginia, it was still very segregated. In fact, we didn't desegregate there until I was in the fifth grade. They started some of the kids in the fifth grade, and by the time uh, I was in the sixth grade, that was the first year. And it was also the first year that I went outside of the, uh, the core of the black community to play. In fact, I was the only black kid on this previously. Well, these cards come from um, a website, Moonlight Graham Cards, and he's affiliated. His name is Chris Rosen, so he donated these cards. Oh, that's right, years. yeah, because Chris, I tell Chris thank you, because he sent, uh, I've had his cards, I guess I can send them back to him. No, uh, no, those are Those good. are mine? Oh, those okay. are good to you. It's kind of nice to see your own name. Uh, I've seen some of the card games where they'll say something about me, and I'll think, wait a minute. Correct. Right. Do we need to write the ratings in? Philly, just uh, have a baseball game. Really really we can do it later. This is more yeah. fine tuned. Fine tuned. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I know what happened to my Stella had a he had a two month period that was just tremendous. My goodness, he hit hit with power. Okay, my other starters will be Charlie Hunt. No, fourteen fourteen homes. I think. Yeah, the Mets. Uh, you didn't like him? Loved him in '86. Thank you all. <laughs> the Mets like him. No, no, no he's, he's, he's not had a pitch. So you change up off, change up. Although we had a guy like that too, Steve Combs, who throw you three speeds of change ups. Oh my goodness. He was, oh, you on, like he was that? on your rookie team too, right? In fact, um, I was mentioning uh, Joe Klein earlier, the, the, the president of the Atlantic League, my first professional manager. and. Uh, he had a gathering of the guys, and he said, uh, take a look to your left and right and pick out another person, because that's all that's going to make it to the majors. And he wasn't saying it, saying it to scare us. He was just saying it to those are, those are the, the numbers. And, and uh, Steve Comer, he was sort of just a throw-in uh, at the University of Minnesota. He had finished his senior year. And he preceded me to the majors. He went up early. He went up, I think, to double A and was probably in the big leagues. 
less than two years. Wow. And uh, Ryan Allard uh, had a little time with Texas and a little time with Seattle. And that was it. Because I had a group of like here off the plate, and Maddox hits it, and Maddox is Maddox. Yeah, you, can't, you can't hit that. You it's almost unfair. They're great pitchers, and here they fall on the outside, yeah. outside pitch, right? Yeah, and, and, and before they were, had the, I was on the Empire Evaluation Committee for about five years, and before that committee, geez. You can just get away with murder. Now it's with all the technology, at least the umpires have to bring it in a little bit more on yeah, But you know what? As long as, he was oh, as long as he was consistent with both teams, you know, yeah, and sometimes they're taking away that outside ball. But you still can't, you can't, right? you can't hit that. Consistency. You can't hit that. You, you just can't. If they're going to call it because they can't. Right, so you have the 17 inches, then any part of the ball, which is roughly what, three, I find in diameter, it's over three, somewhere towards three and a half. So there, so you have another, if they call any part of the outside part of the plate or the block. So that's another three and a half inches you either side. Advantage. So that's 23 or so inches. Are you filming this? And, and then if they go even further, uh, you just can't, you can't hit that pitch. You, you just, you look stupid trying Unless to swing at it. Unless you step over and like, yeah, throw you, your bat oh, out. And then if you lean over there, that's what happened. That with Drabecki, they were going, going away the way the two, two missed off the plate. And I could tell they were, and if anywhere close, you're going to get rung up. Yeah, <laughs> I went out there <laughs> looking <laughs> for it there. <laughs> he threw a cutter right in my hands. He had to run in to catch it. That would be a slow as hell. On a 3 2 pitch, too. That was just awful. All right, so look. Here we go. All right. All right. All right. You guys have to tell them something. So, do we do the tutorial or do we just go into it? Yeah, I think we can kind of. I'll probably pick it up. Since You'll pick it up pretty quick. Yeah. You got the history and the. Uh, yeah. I, I, basically, and now this dice here. If I roll, um, anything one one to three is going to be his card. Anything from four to six is going to be the pitcher's card. So then you'll go to the uh, the column. So you'll roll with these three dice together. All right, and that's six six. So if I'm up with Boggs, you'll look at Honeycutt's card on the back against the lefty, because Boggs is a lefty, and you roll six six, and it would be a single to center field for for Wade. That that assuming that would be you know. This is how he does against lefties, and this is how he does against righties. So when you ran a relief pitcher, and you look at one side and the other. Tell him about the W and N also. Probably yeah. yeah. Good. All right, so we'll get to that. But um, so so that's the basic um, the so roll part. part of the card. Now so the front part of the card is the front the part is the basic game with the, without advanced uh, okay, strategy. So we're playing, uh, no so lefty we're righty. Right, so, so we'll gonna, flip them over. We're yeah. gonna play the back. Right, right. And uh, now you'll get to a, a part of the card. Say for instance, say you roll a five four here, and you see how it says and homer, which I think is normal power, which means like if, if he was a weak power hitter, he's not gonna get a home run. Then that's a 1 to 16, double 17, 20. So we'll be rolling this dice and say I roll a 14. Then if he has the power, he'd be a home run. If not, then it's a single. So it's almost like you'd rather, if he's weak hitter, you'd rather have the higher time to get the jump.